Hello, my friends. I'm coming to you live here from Bangladesh. I'm actually about to get on the airplane and head back home. I've got to go via Malaysia first. I've got to do a stop off in Malaysia. So it'll be 2 a.m., a 2 a.m. flight. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a long, a long time. Apparently, I think I'll, I'll arrive back in Australia, but back home probably by midnight the following night. So a yeah, big trip. But anyway, getting to the point here, what you're here actually here to watch, and that is Xpeng. The new Xpeng P7 has set a 24-hour endurance record, and there's also a scissor door version of this car. You guys know I'd, I'd love to own one of these, my dream car. I don't think it's coming to Australia, not from what I've heard from Xpeng. Sadly, they uh, discouraged people that were in uh, markets outside of China from attending the launch because they said it wasn't for people outside of China. But anyway, I think this car is awesome, and um, I'm going to keep on talking about it because um, I love it regardless of the fact that Xpeng doesn't want to sell it outside of China. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. By the way, if you want this car, please write it in the comments because Xpeng and other EV brands, they do read comments. So that will have an influence on them and that will help me get what I want, which is one of these cars. Two things here. One, the 24-hour endurance record. What even is this? Well, first of all, Xpeng Motors CEO, announced today that the new Xpeng or the Xiaopeng P7 has completed its 24-hour endurance test and it achieved a distance of 3,961 kilometers traveled in 24 hours. I have no idea how that's even possible. That's 4,000 kilometers in 24 hours of driving. If you're still in the dark ages, that's 2,461 miles in 24 hours. I mean, yeah, Crazy, right? So anyway, that means it's beaten the Xiaomi U7, which is uh, a slightly smaller car, by 17 kilometers. It holds the world record. 4,000 kilometers in 24 hours. I mean, I, I didn't think that'd be possible for an electric car, but it is. And there's one really compelling reason for why the, the P7 was able to beat the Xiaomi U7, despite the U7 being... Yeah, a little, a little bit smaller. The CEO of Xiaopeng highlighted the significance of this achievement, saying the 24-hour endurance challenge has seen several impressive performances. In 2019, the Porsche or Porsche Taycan covered 3,425 kilometers. So the P7 beat it by more than 500 kilometers. Anyway, that was followed by the Mercedes-Benz CLA with 3,717 kilometers in 2024. The Xiaomi U7 did 3,944 kilometers uh, this year, and now the P7 has beaten that number. So apparently there's continuous high-speed driving, uh, rapid charging. Of course, the P7 can charge at about 500 kilowatt. It uh, uses lithium-ion phosphate batteries. So lithium-ion phosphate batteries appear to be able to charge more quickly, usually, than uh, ternary batteries, you know, nickel, NCM batteries. So the drivers obviously rotated. No one sat in the car for 24 hours. They had multiple drivers, but they had to obviously drive, charge, drive, charge, drive, charge. So if you've got an EV that can charge at 500 kilowatt and it really charges quickly, then that's a big deal. Now, when I say an EV that can charge at 500 kilowatt, of course, it, that's the peak, peak charging speed. There's a big difference, though, between some of the, say, Hyundai, Kia, Porsche vehicles that say they can charge at 350 kilowatt, but actually can't in the real world. No one's actually been able to do that. Very, very unlikely. They make these claims. They say, oh, our EVs can charge this fast. And then in the real world, they can't quite charge, charge that quickly. Or they might hit a certain peak and they hit a peak for a few seconds and then they go way, way down. So some of these newer EVs coming out of China, they're able to hit a high peak and then really maintain a really, really high level of performance, high level of charging. So some of these EVs, you'd think, oh, they hit 500 kilowatt, then they're just going to go way down, but they don't. They sit at 400 or, or more than 400 for a lot of the charge. And that's the, re the real reason why the Porsche Taycan, which is meant to have 350 kilowatt charging, yeah, did so much less distance than these Chinese cars, the, the Xiaomi Su7 and the P7, because... It's not able to maintain fast charging speeds. That's the biggest difference anyway. So how fast are these cars going to actually set these kinds of records? Well, this is the part that's kind of crazy, right? The Xiaomi U7 Max 
Uh, it achieved 3,944 kilometers and it had an average speed during its test of over 210 kilometers an hour. So this is not just about how fast you can charge the battery, yeah? It's actually also about how fast you can travel at high speeds without using huge amounts of energy. So aerodynamics and powertrain efficiency are extremely important in winning this test and beating everyone else. Anyhow, this means the P7 and I believe the U7, they did 30 charging sessions, 30 charges, yeah, to actually get to this nearly 4,000 kilometers distance covered in 24 hours. So they'll go really, really fast, 210 kilometers an hour, um, or even actually I think quicker than that, maybe 220 or 230, because you've got to, you've got to include the stops, yeah? <laughs> Slowing down to charge. If you're averaging 210 kilometers an hour, you're actually probably going closer to 220 to 230 kilometers an hour for the entire 24 hours. Put it this way, have you ever seen uh, 24 hour r races in with internal combustion engine cars? They do these 24 hour races. There is the 24 hours of Le Mans, there's the 24 hours of Spa, there's numerous 24 hour races around the world. There's Bathurst in Australia. I believe there's one in the US as well. Anyhow, these cars, internal combustion cars, break down so often. I mean, if they're running at peak top speeds like these cars are in this 24-hour test, they, they actually break down. Most of them do. And that's why often there'll be winners out in the lead and they'll actually lose. They actually won't win because their vehicles will break down. It's very, very common. You see here, interesting thing is these EVs can do 4,000 kilometers in 24 hours at peak, basically top speed. None of them are breaking down. They're not breaking down at all. They're not having any problems with overheating, overheating the batteries. Is that happening? Not happening. They're not, over, not over heavy, over, overheating the batteries, not overheating the brakes. So I think you can see this test is actually really cool because it shows you actually how good electric cars are in comparison to internal combustion. Here's the thing. Uh, apparently, there is four areas that are the big challenge. Sustaining ultra high speeds of over 210 kilometers an hour. That's necessary, of course, to be able to put through 4,000 kilometers. Achieving long single charge range. So we have to charge once quickly and get a lot of range from that charge. Ensuring fast charging capabilities and maintaining excellent heat dissipation to withstand dozens of rapid charge discharge cycles over 24 hours. It's a really good test to give you an example of what, how cars, which cars in particular, can actually last a long time being driven hard. So the P7, it comes with an 800 volt high voltage architecture platform and 5C ultra fast charging, which is approximately 500, I've heard up to 550 kilowatt. That means it can add 525 kilometers of range to the battery with the right charger, of course, in only 10 minutes. And maximum range therefore is 820 kilometers, that's CLTC, so about 700 kilometers on the WLTP. 700 kilometers. Now that's the longest range version of the P7. Energy consumption is incredibly low at 12 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Acceleration, zero to 100 takes under three seconds. Top speed is 230 kilometers an hour. So basically the car was, I think, essentially sitting at its top speed for almost 24 hours, which is just remarkable. And finally, getting to the fact you can buy this if you want to with scissor doors, which I think make it look like a supercar. Um, if you got this in silver with those <laughs> with those scissor doors, I think I think you get a lot of eyes thinking, "What is that? That thing looks really awesome." Um, also, the scissor door version of this car it gets, I believe, uh, twenty one inch forged wheels. So forged wheels are obviously lighter than cast alloy wheels, stronger as well. It also gets carbon fiber trim and a, an exclusive matte silver paint finish. So this is the P7 wing edition. I think that matte silver paint finish makes this thing look just ridiculously awesome. The cabin is, um, it features, well, it's interesting. It's got a unique orange radiance color, which I think is um, exclusive to this vehicle. And it also comes with darkened illuminated door seals, um, dynamic of sports seats, and just an interior that I think looks fan. I think the interior and exterior of this car just make it look unbelievable. Power, okay, it comes with the single motor version is 270 kilowatt rear motor, but there's a, there is a dual motor version with 437 kilowatt 
and battery size is 75 kilowatt hours for the smaller battery LFP and the bigger battery is 92.2 kilowatt hours LFP as well. Batteries, I believe, come from Eve Energy and CALB. Range, base model, 702 kilometers. The ultra long range version, which I believe is the one they use for the 24 hour test, 820 kilometers. And then you've got the all wheel drive long range version that gives you 750 kilometers of range. So this is a fairly big vehicle. To give you some context, it's about the same size, a little slightly bigger than a Tesla Model S, just over five meters long, 5,056 millimeters. And it's 1,937 millimeters wide, and it has a three meter long wheelbase. Now, apparently, Xpeng had a pre-sale, even though no one knows what the prices are, and they sold more than 10,000 in six minutes and 37 seconds, which is really good numbers. I think once people know what the prices are, um, they might be likely to sell even more of them. So guys, what do you think about the uh, the P7? Do you guys love it as well? Do you think Xpeng should bring it worldwide or should they make it a China-only model as it was? What does it appear to be at this point in time? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good night. Bye-bye.